Hello. Here is a lesson about normal curves. I talked a little bit about the properties of normal curves in the class, but I want to follow up on, on a more complete description of the, the properties of the normal curve. Um, page 75 of your textbook has, has most of the properties. The first property is all normal curves have the same overall shape. They're symmetric, single peaked, and, and bell shaped. Uh, or unimodal symmetric is another way of saying it. There's two examples down here. Here's a here's a normal curve. Here's another. Oops. Oh, that's nice to pop up. Okay, here's one normal curve here. Here's another normal curve right here. So they can be fat or skinny, but they all have the same basic bell shape to it. Okay, the next property of normal curves is any specific normal curve is completely described by giving its mean and its standard deviation. So you don't need to give quartiles and, and things like that because we already know it's symmetric and skewed. All you need is the mean and standard deviation and you have a complete description of your distribution. The third, the mean is located in the center of the symmetric curve and is the same as the median. So the mean equals the median, which is right there in the center. And then the fourth property is the standard deviation. Th there, th the author uses the symbol, the Greek letter uh, sigma, to indicate standard deviation, which which is fine. Sometimes s is used, sometimes sigma is used. There's a there's a difference, but we'll get to that in another lesson. But we'll just use sigma for now. The standard deviation controls the spread of the normal curve. So for example, if we take another look at our two curves, if you have a large standard deviation, you're going to have a fat normal curve like this. If you have a small standard deviation, you're going to have a skinny normal curve, which makes sense if you think about it because a small standard deviation means there's not much variation in your, in your data, so most of your data is clustered together very close to the mean. A large standard deviation means you have a lot of variation in your data, which means there's more variety and numbers are further away from the mean. All right, so those rules are all nice and, and, and helpful, but there's one rule that is probably more important than all the other rules uh, put together, at least on on homework and, and so forth. And that is called the 6895-99.7 rule uh, right here. Sometimes this is known as the empirical rule as well, but this author calls it the 6895-99.7 rule. And here's what the rule says. Um, approximately, here let's, oops. Okay, well, yeah, this is a good picture. So approximately 68% of the data lies within one standard deviation of the mean. Approximately 95% of the data lies within two standard deviations of the mean. And approximately 99.7% of the data, virtually all the data, is within three standard deviations of the mean. So let, let me say that one more time because it's so important. Suppose you have a set of data uh, you have thousands and thousands of individuals. They take a test or something like that, and you. And if the if the distribution is normal, then you know that 68% of those individuals will have a score that's within one standard deviation of the mean, and about 95% of those individuals will have a score, a test score, or height or whatever it is that's within two standard deviations of the mean, and 99.7% of the individuals have s scores or heights or whatever within three standard deviations of the mean. Let, let's take a look at an example of this. Suppose a large group of students take an IQ test and the distribution of test scores is normal with a mean of 100 and a standard deviation of 20. So A, sketch the curve and then we'll do B, C, and D in, in a minute. So to make a, 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 a sketch of this curve, we know it's normal. They tell us in the problem right here, the distribution of test scores is normal. In fact, pretty much every single question in chapter three 
it'll say blah, 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 comma, the distribution is normal, comma, and blah, 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 and then find this and this and this and this. And so every, if you know that it's normal because it says so in the problem, then you know that your distribution will look something like this. So here's our, our sloppily drawn normal curve. Okay, the mean is 100. That's the mean test score. That goes right there in the middle. Mean and median are the same with normal curves. And the standard deviation is 20. So let's go out 20 points, either direction, and that'll be 80 down there, 120 up there. So that means 68% of the students who took this IQ test score between 80 and 120 points in this region right there. A lot of people like to put little dashed marks or something to sort of indicate the 68% uh, mark right there. But you, but you don't have to. Okay, and then let's go up another standard deviation. Let's go up another 20 points up, another 20 points down. And if, if you like, you can put little dashed lines here. And this tells us that 95% from here to here, 95% of the students scored between 60 and 120 points. And then 99.7 score within three standard deviations. So let's go up and down three standard deviations. So that's one standard deviation, two standard deviations, three standard deviations. And go up three standard deviations. One, two, three, that's 160. So 99.7% of all the uh, students scored between 100, or be between 40 and 160 points on their IQ test. The textbook has a really nice uh, example of this. Here, here's a very nice picture uh, from the textbook. This is on page uh, 77. The middle 68% and then the next 95% and then 99.7% out here. And, uh, and that's it. Let me find the off button here.